हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सिस्टमैटिक फिजिक्स हियर वी विल बी गाइडिंग यू फॉर कंटेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स फॉर बोर्ड्स नीट एंड जे डबल ऑसिलेशन कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम कॉर्नर लेवल वन सेट थ्री सिंपल पेंडुलम एज यू कैन सी द डिस्प्लेस पोजिशन ऑफ अ सिंपल पेंडुलम देर आर टू बेसिक फोर्सेस एक्टिंग ऑन द बॉडी एम जी विच इज वर्टिकली डाउन बोर्ड्स एंड टेंशन इन द स्ट्रिंग now what i do here is i resolve mg into two components as seen in the diagram one of the component which is cos component will balance the tension t and other component that will produce the restoring force with the help of this particular thing we have derived the formula for time period of a simple pendulum and the formula is t equal to 2 pi square root of l by g and if you want to find out the frequency it will be reciprocal of that that is f equal to 1 upon 2 pi square root of g by l oscillations of spring combination if the springs are in series the resultant k would be 1 upon ks is equal to 1 upon k1 plus 1 upon k2 that is k1 plus k2 upon k1 into k2 so the time period of oscillation t would be equal to 2 pi square root of m by ks that is 2 pi square root of k1 plus k2 upon k1 into k2 whole into m if in the spring pendulum two springs are joined in parallel arrangement kp is equal to k1 plus k2 so the resultant time period t is equal to 2 pi square root of m upon k1 plus k2 these rules are applicable for horizontal motion of a spring mass systems too problems based on simple pendulum problem number 15 the bob of a pendulum of length l is pulled aside from its equilibrium position through an angle theta and then release the bob will be then passed through its equilibrium position with a speed of four options a b c d are given in front of you let's see the solution when the bob of pendulum is brought to a position making an angle theta with the equilibrium position then the height through which the pendulum falls will be h is equal to l minus l cos theta take l out what is left 1 minus cos theta in the bracket so what is h or the height through which the pendulum falls is l into 1 minus cos theta taking free fall of the pendulum u is equal to 0 a is equal to g and h is equal to l into 1 minus cos theta now we know that v square is equal to u square plus 2 gh now put h is equal to l into 1 minus cos theta so obviously v is equal to square root of 2 gl 1 minus cos theta so the option a is the correct answer while driving around a curve of 200 meter radius the driver noted that the pendulum in the car hangs at an angle of 15 degrees with the vertical the speedometer of the car reads in meter per seconds options are there in front of you let's see at any position of the pendulum there are two basic forces acting on the body mg vertically downwards and tension in the string along the string away from the body now resolve t into two components t cos theta and t sin theta you can see here t cos theta balances the weight mg and if i equate that t cos theta is equal to mg so you get t is equal to mg by cos theta now the horizontal component t sin theta which is pointing towards the center of a circular path will provide me necessary centripetal force so what i know is t sin theta is equal to mv square upon r now divide 1 by 2 or equate it however you have to solve these two things simultaneously i get t is equal to mg by cos theta right and mg tan theta is equal to mv square upon r now from here i get v square is equal to rg tan theta so v is equal to square root of rg tan theta so velocity would be equal to almost 23 so option b is the correct answer problem number 17 a man measures the period of a simple pendulum inside a stationary lift and finds it to be t if the lift accelerates with an acceleration of g by 4 then the period of pendulum will be options four options are right in front of you you know that t is equal to 2 pi square root of l by g where g is the resultant acceleration now since lift is moving upwards the net acceleration pendulum will face would be g plus g by 4 that becomes 5 g by 4 so my t1 would be equal to 
2 pi square root of l by 5 g by 4. If you adjust those terms, you get it as 2 pi square root of l by g into root 4 by 5. So, that turns out to be t into square root of 4 by pi. So, that is 2t upon root 5. So, option c is the correct answer. A clock pendulum made of inver. Inver is a metal alloy. It is iron alloy basically. Has a period of 0.5 seconds at 20 degrees. If the clock is used in a climate where temperature average is 30 degrees, how much time does the clock lose in each oscillation? For inver, alpha is equal to 9 into 10 raised to minus 7 per degree Celsius and g is constant. Options are there in front of you. Time period of a simple pendulum t is equal to 2 pi square root of l by g. Delta t by t is equal to half delta l by l. Why? Because t is directly proportional to square root of l. So, power of l is half. So, error in the measurement of time is equal to half times the error in the measurement of length. Now, the increase in the length also depends on a temperature. So, delta l by l is equal to, basically it is directly proportional to delta theta. But since there is a proportionality, there has to be some constant. And that constant here is what? Alpha, coefficient of linear expansion. Now, delta L by L, this value, you put in the first equation. So, I get delta T by T is equal to half alpha delta theta. You know alpha value now. Delta theta is rise in temperature. That is 30 minus 20. You get the entire expression as delta T by T is equal to 45 into 10 raised to minus 6. So, delta T is equal to T into 45 into 10 raised to minus 6. Now, T value is known to you 0.5. It is mentioned earlier. If I substitute that value, I get delta T is equal to 2.25 into 10 raised to minus 6 seconds. That option A is the correct answer. For a body of mass M attached to the spring, the spring factor is given by omega, angular frequency. Options are right in front of you. We know that T is equal to 2 pi square root of m by k. By squaring both the sides, you get T square is equal to 4 pi square m by k. Now, you adjust those terms, you get k is equal to omega square into m. So, omega is equal to what? 2 pi by t. So, value of k is equal to omega square into m. So, the option is b. That is the correct answer. A particle of mass 200 gram executes SHM. The restoring force is provided by spring of force constant 80 Newton per meter square. The time period of oscillation is options a b c d are right in front of you now we know that t is equal to 2 pi square root of m by k now you put the values of m and k in the expression you get t is equal to 0.314 so the option a is the correct answer now this is a problem little complicated understand problem number 21 if k suffix s and k suffix p respectively are effective spring constant in series and parallel combination of a spring as shown in the figure then what is ks upon kp you can see the diagram right k and 2k connected in series that will give me ks is equal to 2k by 3 why because 1 upon ks is equal to 1 upon k1 plus 1 upon k2 if i adjust those terms i get ks is equal to 2k by 3 in parallel arrangement kp is equal to k1 plus k2 so that becomes 3k so kp is equal to 3k now take a ratio ks upon kp so when you take that ratio that is 2 by 9 so option c is the correct answer free vibrations if a body capable of oscillating is slightly displayed from its position of equilibrium and then released it starts oscillating with a frequency of its own such oscillations are called free vibrations. The frequency of free vibrations with which a body oscillates is called a natural frequency and which is given by 1 upon 2 pi square root of k by m. Force vibration. The vibration in which a body oscillates under the effect of external periodic force whose frequency is different from the natural frequency of an oscillating body are called force vibrations. Now, damped vibrations. Now, this is something which is very important. The oscillations in which the amplitude decreases gradually with the passage of time are called damped vibrations. Damping force Fd is equal to minus Bv. 
where v is the velocity of oscillator and b is a damping constant the displacement of the oscillator is given by you have the formula x is a function of t so it is equal to a e raised to minus bt upon 2m cos of omega dash t plus phi where omega dash is equal to square root of k by m minus b by 2m the whole square that is b square upon 4m square the mechanical energy e of the oscillator is given by half k a square and here the amplitude would decrease with the time so the value of amplitude is a into e raised to minus bt by 2m so when i put that value i get half k a square e raised to minus bt by m problems based on free damped and forced oscillations problem number 22 if the differential equation given by d2y by dt square plus 2k dy by dt plus omega square y is equal to f0 sin pi t describes the oscillatory motion of body in a dissipative medium under the influence of a periodic force then the state of maximum amplitude of the oscillation is measured of options are there in front of you here the state of maximum amplitude of oscillation is a measure of resonance so the answer is d problem number 23 the amplitude of damp oscillator becomes one third in two seconds if its amplitude after six seconds is one by n times the original amplitude then the value of n is equal to we know that a is equal to a naught e raised to minus lambda into t where a zero is the initial value of amplitude lambda is constant at t is equal to two seconds we have a is equal to a zero by three i put all the values there so i get 1 by 3 is equal to e raised to minus 2 lambda now at t is equal to 6 let's see what happens at t is equal to 6 a naught by n is equal to a 0 e raised to minus lambda by 6 minus lambda 6 we can split into this way that is e raised to minus 2 lambda the whole cube now e raised to minus 2 lambda is known to you that is 1 by 3 so 1 by 3 the cube so n becomes 27 so the answer is d which is 3 raised to 3 we have tried giving you the subject knowledge in very systematic manner please like and share the video with your friends and subscribe to stay connected with systematic physics thank you